The speculation is, and this is where people like Trisha Cannon, McCannon, and others, they want to say that Jesus, after that he was 12 years old, took off, went to India, and he learned mystery ideas, cult ideologies. He learned how to meditate. He, learned to, he probably learned how to levitate. That's what they say. They make that up and there is absolutely zero evidence that that ever happened. So where does Trisha McCannon get her knowledge of the things that Jesus did before he was 30 years old? Where do you think she got that? Did she get it from the National Enquirer? No. Did she get it from a, a drama documentary on the History Channel? No. She was told by devils what Jesus did from the time he was 12 to the time he was 30. Devils, familiar spirits, told her information. And do we trust that? Not on your life. McCannon claimed that as a young child she could see often fairies in the forest near Atlanta and eventually she met who she discovered was the guardian of the forest, a tall, white, blonde-haired, blue-eyed angel, a Nordic from the north country down here on this earth calling her the guardian of the forest no one can go in there and if they do any harm we will harm them and we'll spit them right back out or we'll make them so afraid they'll just leave things like that remember what like like Josiah Hezekiah some of these righteous kings before them, their predecessors were so evil, people were worshiping gods in the groves, which means that they had all these plants, and then they had a little picture of their deity surrounded by these plants, right? You ever seen that in America or where you live, where they put a statue of Mary around all these plants? That's a grove, and, and it, if we were living in Bible times and Joshua would have seen that, he would have walked on your yard and cut all that down. And if you would have complained about it, he would have taken you and had you killed. Because you were promoting the worship of a false God instead of worshiping the real God. Wow. But this, she was introduced to a Nordic alien from the north. Blonde haired, blue eyed, glowing, glowing face. Very beautiful thing. She probably received some sort of wisdom or some package of something from this angel. Um, McCannon also became involved with a group called Ekenkar. Now I recognize that because. There's a, a major street that runs out of St. Louis into West St. Louis County. It's called Manchester Boulevard. And on Manchester Boulevard, there is a little in a strip mall type thing where they got all these different stores like a barber shop and a pet shop and a bookstore and different things like that. There is an Ekin Car Center and they've got signs up around the area saying, you know, and then they all say like, did you ever... Did you ever figure out what your purpose in life is? Well, we can help you find that out. Join Ekenkar, things like that. Well, she is, got involved with a group called Ekenkar. And Ekenkar, take a look at this picture. They tap into these divine beings. One called Fubby Quants. One called Gopal Des. Another one called Kata Daki, Lai Tsi, Rami Nuri, Rebazar Tars, uh, Tawart Manangi, Paul Twitchell, I think he's like the ringleader of the Ekin Car movement. 
and then Yaobi Sakabi. These are all familiar spirits, which are devils. These are the ascended masters, thus the Nordics, thus they are familiar spirits. And they are lying through their angelic teeth. Pretty sure they have them. They're lying through them. All right. Now, there is, there's a reason why I brought Trisha McCannon up. McCannon also claims that Nordic White Angels showed her a secret map to all the secret worlds and dimensions. Let me stop right here and explain that. You've heard me talk about the fourth dimension. We currently live in the third dimension. There is the measurements that can be taken this way, this way, and this way. Okay? So it's X, Y, and Z. All right? So if you're in space, you can't go west, you can't go east, you can't go this. So in space, they would navigate like, okay, let's take a, a, an X positive turn 12 degrees or a Y negative turn 40 degrees or Z from wherever they are. Let's take a move from Z minus 20 degrees. If you watch Star Trek 2, you'll see that, okay? So that's what these dimensions are. We're in the third dimension. There is a higher dimension above us. The Bible talks about it in amazing language. I love that. God opened up my eyes and taught me the fourth dimension from the pages of this beloved book, King James Bible. I love it. Okay. She claims that these masters are telling her that there are even higher dimensions. They just keep on going. And that there is a secret map that the ascended masters have. They showed it to her, but they didn't let her keep it. But it was a secret map to all the secret worlds and dimensions. Like setting them up to believe that there are other planets and we live on those planets. We came from those planets and here's the map that we're going to show you. The first, the first recorded abduction in modern times, Betty and Barney Hill, on board the spacecraft, uh, Betty Hill remembered one of the aliens showed her a star chart of where their home planet was. Now, she didn't know anything about astronomy whatsoever. She gets, you know, she goes on with her life. She starts remembering all this through psych, uh, hypnotic regression. Come to find out the map that these aliens showed her was real. It even, they even showed her stars that for us are not visible unless you use a telescope. And so when they looked at the map that Betty Hill drew out, I think it was Stanton Freeman, the ufologist, physicist, took that same map and overlaid it on a map of different areas of the night sky. He found a perfect match right down to a star in that cluster that cannot be seen with the naked eye. It can only be seen with a telescope. Okay? Anyway. So I'm bringing this idea up of a, of a map that shows, let's read it again. She also claims that the Nordic White Angel showed her a secret map to all the secret worlds and dimensions. She was taught that there was a secret river of sound that you can use to ride to these secret worlds. Remember what I told you about the word Om, where they get down and they chant and they go, Om, Om. 
They do that, in some cases, for hours. And what does the word om mean? Well, it doesn't have a meaning and never will. It's not supposed to. It's a word that is meaningless, and it's that way on purpose. And here, she, uh, McCannon was told by this Nordic angel slash alien that if she chanted out this sound, it would become, it would become a secret river of sound that she could ride on to go to various dimensions and worlds. And according to Trisha McCannon, it worked. She's actually been there to some of these places. Or at least, I'll say it like this, that's what the devil's put into her mind. Okay? Now, which brings us to Get ready for this. I have a pastor's wife, good friend of ours, saw that I was talking about angels or aliens from the North Pole, frozen. And she asked me, she said, Pastor, have you seen the movie Frozen 2? And I said, no, I, I haven't. I, you know, I wouldn't normally watch something like that. My grandkids, they've seen Frozen 1. I got a granddaughter, cute as a button, but she sings Let It Go, just like the gal in the movie. She knows all the words and all the moves, okay? It does look cute, I have to admit. But this pastor's wife said, you've got to watch Frozen 2. I'm telling you, you have to watch Frozen 2 because here you are talking about Northern Army aliens slash angels coming down from the north side and taking over earth or bringing earth to a new age of enlightenment where we're going to evolve and change and transform. She said, you've got to watch Frozen 2. And then she said, I'd be interested in see what you came up with. Well, obviously this movie affected her she has grandkids like we do and it affected her in a way to where she said there's something about that movie that isn't right so I'm gonna phone a friend on this one and I'm gonna ask brother Mike if he's seen it and if not will he take a look at it and let me know well I did and I'm telling you it is full of satanic elemental witchcraft. Now I'm not going to play any video clips from it because I don't want YouTube to give me a strike on my channel. I am going to show you screen captures. Okay, So take a look at this. You know what? There's always a, in these movies there's always a journey that people have to go on and that's deliberate. Because a lot of movies deal with a person's, the, the background theme of these movies is really you and your journey of discovery in life. I don't care what movie it is. Frozen 2, what movies are out there? National Treasure, that goes back a while. The, the new Star Wars trilogy all about a journey of enlightenment and transformation. Always. There was a book written on it. I have the book. And this guy breaks down movies and he basically says all the really well done movies, they all have these exact same elements in them. But it's the, and he calls it the hero's journey. And it's about someone who faces a crisis, chases down what he thinks the solution is, there is a transformation of the character because at some point there's going to be a crisis point and the character has to decide, am I going to be the hero or am I just going to go back and be like everybody else? But the totality of the circumstances in the movie causes the person 
to then pursue being a hero. And there's some tests that he has to go through to prove his worth. And then at the end, he's the savior of everybody. Pick a movie, watch it. You'll see it. So here's this moment where Elsa, the main character, who has the she's she's the one that has the powers to go touch things and it makes them turn into ice. She learned how to get control of that. Now she's back with her sister. I can't remember her name. But there is a, a forest that for many years has been covered over by a mystical fog. And nobody can go in and make it through that fog. It's like a barrier. It's, they find out there's a group of people that's living inside of that. They've been living in there for years. It's like 60 years, something like that. They can't get out and everybody else can't go in through that. But Elsa, why well, she walks right through it. And notice when she gets through it, she sees these four pillars. How many? Four. Think Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. And these four pillars contain the, a symbol that was custom designed by whoever made the movie, but they represent the four elements. Earth, air, fire, and water. And what you're going to see if you watch this movie or you just take my word for it, what you'll see is that there is a beast that is associated with each one of these elementals, they're called. You know, I learned this back when I was in grade school, elementary school. I don't remember what year it was, maybe fourth grade. I remember a teacher saying, now back in the old days, in ancient times, the Greeks and everybody, they believed that everything in the earth was made up of four primary elements, earth, air, fire, and water. We now know that that was in error, and so they, that's where they bring out the periodic table of the elements. Here's hydrogen, here's oxygen number eight, here's carbon number six, and so on. It has to do with the electrons floating around it, and these are the elements. But the Greeks, they believed in earth, air, and fire, and water, and that everything was made of one or a combination of those things, okay? But you see, that wasn't really the end of it, though, because the four elements represented something far deeper than that. Far deeper than that. Because the idea was that if you could ever bring the four elements together and join them, it would produce, I, I won't tell you now, it'll produce something. So here they are, they're fixing, they're, there's the fog there, you see it. And there is the pillars with the four elements on it. This is going to play heavily into the movie. Well, guess what? After 60 some odd years of nobody being able to go through that fog, Elsa does. Wow. She just walks right through it where she gets her first encounter with the elementals. She gets an encounter with what they call Gale. So the producers of Frozen 2 featured Gale as like these leaves dancing around everybody. And sometimes Gale would blow on you to get you to go in a certain direction and so on. And she was able, Elsa was able to control Gale so that Gail didn't just push and push and push. She could con control, she, she sort of connected with Gail. Then she met the salamander. Okay, now, in the movie Frozen, they took the four elements and with three of them, they sort of invented different characterizations of those elements. Like, uh, let's see here. Earth, of course, would be represented by dirt. 
air represented by maybe the sun or earth would be represented by green grass, we'll say. Air would be represented by the sun, yellow. Um, water, I can't remember how water, water was represented, but when you get into Wiccan elemental magic, they assigned different spirits to these elements, like, uh, let's see, the earth element spirit was a gnome. You know, like the little garden gnomes that people have in their houses. Okay, that's what they were. These were spirits, little people spirits, that were the guardians of, like, the earth element. Okay? The water element was represented by, I can't remember what that was, the air element represented by fairies. Little fairies dancing around. And in Wiccan magic, fire was represented by a salamander, just like in the movie. The, in the movie, the only one that they didn't change was the salamander. All the other ones they changed. But the salamander remained the same. I think I know why. So the salamander comes out, goes around spitting fire everywhere and catching all the leaves on fire. Well, Elsa's going behind him, touching them, so they turn to ice. And the salamander keeps doing that. And she keeps blowing ice everywhere, knocking the fires out. Finally, she approaches the salamander. He's spitting fire at her. She's uh, shielding herself with her little frozen gimmicks that she has in her hand, stuff like that. And then all of a sudden now she's tamed salamander. And we find out later she ends up taming all of the elements. She now is the master of earth, air, fire, and water. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I have a verse in Ephesians 2 that tells you who really does have the mastery of the elements. Ephesians 2, verse 2, wherein in time past she walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. You remember the, it was a cartoon and then an, uh, a real feature, a live feature called The Last airbender he was some martial arts kid that controlled air now see that's a mockery of Jesus Christ because remember Jesus was on a boat right and he was asleep and all the guys were fishing all of a sudden the wind and the waves and a storm came up and they thought the ship was going to capsize and so they shook Jesus. Master, Master, wake up. Carest thou not that we perish? My friend, Pastor Reg Kelly, preached the message one time, and he said, that's the stupidest statement in the whole Bible. Master, carest thou not that we perish? Why do you think God sent Jesus to begin with? So that we wouldn't perish but have everlasting life. Amen? So Jesus says, peace, be still. That's all he does. And remember what his disciples said? Even the wind obeyeth his voice. The wind. Jesus is the real one who has control of fire, earth, air. And he's the one who walked on water. You see the, you see the mockery already? So she controls all of these elementals and then she meets this tribe people who live inside of here and the tribe people they know these elementals they've known them for years and here's what one here's what like the tribal lady i don't know she was like the chief chief et or the high priestess or whatever or both but she said this we only trust nature when nature speaks we listen. And you understand what she's talking about? She's talking about the four elements, earth, air, fire, 
and water. And notice how they're opposites. Earth is opposite of air. Air is opposite of earth. Fire is the opposite of water. Water is the opposite of fire. Fire can transform water into steam. However, water can put out fire. It's weird. I know it. It's weird. Okay? Now, think about what she said. We only trust nature. When nature speaks, we listen. How about bring some Bible in on this? Galatians 4, 8. How be it then, when you knew not God, ye did service unto them which by nature are no gods. By nature. They're not the real gods that you should be praying to. You should be praying to the one who created those gods, not the gods. Ephesians 2, 3, among whom also we all, all had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature, by nature, the children of wrath, even as others. See, we use the word nature to describe you know, the, all the living beings and creatures that exist on our world. But then we also use the word nature to describe our character and what's really in us on the inside. Okay? And I'm telling you, I have a sin nature. And so do you. So the phrase in this movie, we only trust nature. And I've been spending years trying to not listen to my nature anymore. Because I hate it. Hebrews 2.16, For he took not on him the nature of who? Angels. But he took on him the seed of Abraham. You know I have a book called The Complete Idiot's Guide to Wiccan Witchcraft. I've shown you this before. The funny thing about these elements, earth, air, fire, and water, according to the Wiccans in this book who are teaching people who want to be witches, don't know how, so they're writing it in very simple terms. And what they say is that each element is, represents, at, uh, since there are four elements, then there are four directions, north, south, east, and west. And each element represents a certain direction. And each element in each direction and each solstice and equinox, they have a spirit that rules over them. And that spirit is called a watchtower. Watchtower Bible and Tract Society, Jehovah's Witness. But anyway, each watchtower essentially is a dragon. And this book says these dragons are asleep now. So if you intend to use elemental witchcraft and you're going to summon these dragons, proceed with caution. Because if these dragons wake up and they get startled, they will blow and belch fire out of their mouth and they'll consume you in a heartbeat and not think nothing of it. I'm telling you, that's what the witches believe. That each of these elements are guarded over by dragons, which are devils. Does it make sense now? So what are, they, what are they teaching the kids in this movie? That the elements are good. Use the elements. We only trust nature. We only follow the elements. They're telling them to worship the dragon. Here's the salamander. She's tamed him. Now he's happy. Now he doesn't go around spitting fire trying to chase her off. Here is another salamander. Look at him. He's got a priest's mitre on his head. Face of a man. Body of a dragon. The moon has six stars, by the way. 
And according to Manley Hall and Secret Teachings of All Ages, it says the Egyptians, the Chaldeans, and the Persians often mistook the salamanders for gods because of their radiant splendor and great power. The Greeks, following the example of the earlier nations, deified the fire spirits and in their honor kept incense and altar fire burning perpetually. You know, at the tomb of John Fitzgerald Kennedy, there is a flame that burns all the time. It's called the eternal flame. And it's been burning ever since he was laid to rest in that grave. Just a constant flame coming up. They call that the eternal flame. And its source, and why do they do that? Its source derives from this idea that this is a spiritual force guarding over the dead. Not kidding you. There are eternal flames everywhere. You go into Catholic churches, what do they got? They got candles lit, and those candles stay lit non-stop. Elemental witchcraft. Okay? And beside, and you get it, right? That salamander is a reptile. He's a dragon. A type of dragon. But he's a dragon nonetheless. Then, while they're in the village inside the, you know, the fog area, she's, Elsa's sitting around the fire in a little hut with a lady friend that she met in that village. And this lady is showing her her embroidery. And notice the four corners. She explains to her that those are the four elements, earth, air, fire, and water. Notice she's got her finger pointed to the middle. This is going to be extremely in, uh, interesting and crucial when we get to the end of this. And we're getting there. She's pointing to the middle and she says there is a fifth spirit said to be a bridge between us and the magic of nature. A bridge between the fifth element, which is ether, and us puny human mortals. So the fifth element acts as a mediator between the puny humans and the all-powerful four elements so that the four elements and humans can work together, but it requires the fifth element, ether, the spirit, to be the go-between. People, this is such a mockery of Bible doctrine. We, personally, sinful man, cannot approach God the Father on our own. He is holy, and He cannot abide in the presence of our sins. So He sent His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ the righteous, who died for our sins, paid the penalty for our transgressions, rose again on the third day, and now he is the mediator between us and God. Somebody say amen. I reject their witchcraft nonsense. You know, YouTube asked me now if this video is for kids. And I always click no. But I'm encouraging you to bring your children in to watch at least this last section about Frozen 2. Because if they've seen it or they are going to see it, they need to be instructed and armed and trained so that they don't fall into the trap of going after the elemental. Because this is real. Elemental witchcraft is real. And, it, and there are people who actually cast spells on other people. I'm not making that up. Um, at one point, Elsa, she sees all of these elements and they're turned into diamonds. And I want you to notice she's reaching out to touch one with her hand like this. Now, I've got a lot and I'm getting more. I'm waiting till I get a bunch of them. But I see this hand gesture made deliberately in movies 
everywhere. TV shows. One in particular, let me show you. The reason why I bring this one up, it's called The Voice. Notice it's holding a microphone, but it's still making the gesture. Three fingers up, two pointing down. What does that even mean? Well, if you look at this, there's a connection between the graphic where it talks about the voice, which was a, a, um, it was a talent show, a TV talent show in America. They called the voice, and that was their logo. Three fingers pointing up, two pointing down, holding a microphone. That's not normally how you hold a microphone, but that's how they did it. Then you have Elsa doing the same thing as she's reaching out to touch one of the diamond-shaped elements that she encountered. Okay? And the idea is that Elsa keeps being drawn in toward this secret island that I haven't talked about yet, but a secret island in the north, where nobody knew it was there, a secret place in the north, and she's being led there by, guess what? A voice. And the voice is not saying any words. The voice is just singing certain notes, and Elsa follows. Look at here. The voice. The voice. I can tell you, I've done enough study to know that the phrase, the voice, is a phrase related to the Antichrist. No kidding. As I said, I've seen lots of this in movies. Here's one. This is from the top two pictures are Laura Croft Tomb Raider. She's doing it. Her dad is doing it. And it was like a secret sign between her and her dad. This finger symbol was a signal between her and her father. So it was deliberate. Notice on the bottom here, you have Tom Hanks. And he is in the movie The Da Vinci Code. And notice that he's doing it deliberately. He's like pointing to things, but his hands are exactly like this. Why is that? There's no doubt that he was directed to make his fingers do that because in a later novel that Dan Brown wrote, um, The Lost Symbol, it's about Washington, D.C., the opening scene of that book features a hand called The Hand of the Mysteries, and it was cut off of somebody sitting in the middle of the Capitol, right underneath the Capitol Dome, and it was doing this in that book. Not kidding you. Of course, there is Baphomet making the hand gesture. By the way, there to the left is the hand of the mysteries. This is what Dan Brown wrote into his book, The Lost Symbol, because somebody got their right hand chopped off and it was stuck there right in the center point underneath the Capitol Dome doing this. And what it means is, here's what's above and here's what's below, and they're joined together in one hand. They shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. That's what that means. And by the way, this is a two and a three. What do you get? 23. And then look at Baphomet again. He's doing the opposite here. It's two and three still. He could have held it like that, but he held it like that. It's still a two and a three. So you have 23 here and 23 here. That's the formula for how to make a baby. The husband gives 23 chromosomes. The wife gives 23 chromosomes. The baby has 46 altogether. Ba, ba, ba. Uh, now, back to Elsa. She's on this journey looking for, she doesn't even know what she's looking for, but she thinks she's looking for a river. So she sees a boat, her and her sister, and she recognizes it as a boat that her parents and I think grandfather owned, but it's sitting out in the middle of nowhere and they have no idea how it got there. And the movie that I don't think really explains it. So they go on this boat and one of the girls is saying, there's always a secret compartment here where they keep things dry. So they finally find it. They find this big tube, glass tube, 
with metal frame around it. Take the end, just like in Da Vinci Code, take the end of it off and dump out the contents and it's two pieces of paper. One of them they rolled out has a language on it written in symbols that look like hexagons. Hexagon is the number six. And they say, what language is this? Now we know from our Bibles exactly what that means. We go back to Deuteronomy 28. Boy, I turned right to it. God said um, in verse 49 of Deuteronomy 28, The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far from the end of the earth. From the end of the earth, right? The north. As swift as the eagle flieth, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. And I would, again, say to you, name me a language on this earth that nobody knows what it is. Nobody does. It doesn't exist. Every language that there is, I guarantee you, there's somebody who learns how to speak it. So it's not a language from anybody here. It's a language of a nation that's coming down from the north. Okay? So, they realize that, see these four different shaped symbols? Those are the same symbols that were on these four pillars. So you can see in the screen capture of the movie, a close-up of the, the scroll that they found and see that the writing, the symbolic writing, is significantly different than when they drew out the four elements on that paper. And basically, this is an idea, and I talked about this the other day on Pastor Mike Online. It's a, it's a secret religious language. The Buddhists have one called Sanskrit. Uh, I talked about another one the other day. I can't remember the name of it. When the Roman church always said the mass in Latin and had the Bible translated into Latin and forbid it to be translated to any other language, their excuse was Latin is the language of God. Well, if you talk to the Hindus, Sanskrit is the language of the gods. And you have different religions around the world who insist that there is a sacred language that can't be used by profane people. It can only be used by the elect and the adepts, but not by the plain people, because we are the ones entrusted with those words because we can't tell them to anybody. People, that's a joke. Okay? But it's indicative of a nation, a very evil nation, whose tongue nobody will understand. Nobody. Now, back to the paper, she points to handwriting on there, and the handwriting is that of their mother. She apparently, we don't know if she read the document, their mother, but she wrote on here, the end of the ice age, the river found but lost, and then it says, magic source, Elsa's source. Elsa's source of her powers to be able to touch things and they become instantly frozen, which is magic. And so their mother suspected that the source of the magic that Elsa had to turn things to ice had something to do with this document. Then they find the map, the secret map to a, that leads them to a secret island where there is a secret river that no one knows about, but it's there. Back in the days when I was studying the Da Vinci Code, the background stuff of the Da Vinci Code, I was reading a lot of books. I read the Da Vinci Code, I made notes, then I did some of the background research that Dan Brown obviously did. We read some of the same books. And I remembered them telling about a river called Arcadia. And it's a secret river that flows underground. And that river, in that river, 
is it possesses all of the secret occult knowledge that we can tap into. An underground stream of secret doctrines and secret knowledge. Well, it's the same thing here. Only the river is not called Arcadia. It's not called Styx. It's not called the river Euphrates. It's called Altahalan. And so, and then she says, and it's frozen. So it's like a glacier, which is a river of frozen water. It's a river of ice. So I wanted to know where they got the name Altahalan because remember, this is sort of based loosely upon um, northern nations like Norway, Sweden, countries like that, but they've kind of changed some of the names that they use in here. Okay? And they had this tradition. Their forefathers worshipped the four elements, earth, air, fire, and water. And so some of these names that they use in Frozen come from Scandinavian legends. And Altahalan is one of them. There's actually a wiki, an encyclopedia related to Disney movies. And there's one on Frozen 2. So I looked it up. I wanted to know what Altahalan meant. Well, here it is. There's an article. If you go to the Disney wiki and find the Frozen w information, here's what you'll find. Otto Holland may be a name created from the Finnish language or one of the Sami languages. Otto, the Finnish god of waters, and Hala, frost on the ground. Otto, the god of the waters. John said in Revelation 13, I saw a beast rise up out of the sea. Da, da, da. Guess what this river is? Atahalan represents where the beast rises up from, where he's contained in. And it's a mockery of Jesus Christ. Psalm 46, remember this, 46? Psalm 46, verse 4, says this. There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. What did Jesus say to the woman at the well? That I'll, if you come to me for water, I'll give you a river of life flowing forth from inside of you. When we get to heaven, we're going to get to drink of the river of the water of life freely. But this is talking about an occult river. A secret river that only the very select elite can access to. God says his river is open to everybody that wants it. It's right here. Jeremiah 47, 2. Thus saith the Lord, behold, waters rise up out of the north and shall be an overflowing flood, and shall overflow the land, and all that is therein, the city, and them that dwell therein. Then the men shall cry, and all the inhabitants of the land shall howl. Did you know that that verse actually took place in the movie Frozen 2? Because Elsa's grandfather just kind of turned evil one time. And he built a dam and shut off the river. That You know, those people that were stuck in the forest in that mist... Well, they lived off that river, and Elsa's grandfather dammed that river up and destroyed their source of food, or something like that. So you know what happens? 
they tear the dam down. And that river, just like in here, became an overflowing flood. And they thought they were going to lose their precious home city. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. So now, let's get back to Elsa. She's on her way to find her destiny. She comes to a big ocean. She tries to cross the ocean. The waves are too high. She tries to freeze the ocean as she walks, and the waves keep breaking the ice. And she finds out rising up out of the sea is a beast. I'm not kidding you. In the shape of a horse, a mare. Now, I kind of get the play on words, I think. A mare is a horse, but the word mare or mare is the Italian word for sea. Because I order, my, one of my favorite dishes is tutta mare. The food that comes out of the sea. It's a pasta dish. Oh, I love it. Anyway, she tames the horse eventually. She tames the horse. Rides across the sea, finds the island, and she sees that the river is frozen. Now, her destiny is to find out what's in there. So, look up on the screen. She ends up going through one, two, three, four tunnels and chambers. It's the opposite of the Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Jesus said, I'm the door. I'm the door. Anybody wants to come in? Just ask me. I'll let you in. She goes through four doors in the Bible, in in, even in Wicca, all of this matters because numbers in the Bible are flipped upside down in the occult. They usually mean the opposite. So here we have the four Gospels, then the spiritual realm. Elsa goes through four hallways, four tunnels or whatever. She's singing this song, you know, making it all. She's on this journey. She's going to find this and that. And that. She's going to be freed and all this, blah, blah, blah. The fourth door that she goes through, she enters into a chamber that's full of stars. What are stars in the Bible? They are spirits, angels, devils, some of them. And then she sees these stars turning into each one of the four elements. The stars turn into the leaf, which was Gale. The stars turn into the rock giants, which are the, um, the elementals of the earth, these big rock stone giants. The stars turn into like a water, like a lake. And then the stars turn into, it's supposed to be a salamander, but I tell you that looks like a dragon to me. The stars then are revealing to her, we're the source of the four elements. Do you, do you understand? Have you not caught on what these four elements really are? I've read it to you a dozen million times. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. There's your four elements. And there's your fourth kingdom. Right here. So now she's in this room with all these stars. And take a look on the screen. All of the stars join together to make these diamond-shaped, star-shaped four elements. And she's singing a song, but she's performing a ritual. And the four stars lay down on the ground, and then all of a sudden, a fifth star joins in the middle. Elsa, singing her song, walks to the center point of that. What did we say about that? Center point? A point within a circle? Center point is a new age occult term. You have churches all over the place called center point or variations of that. Cross point, faith point, whatever. But it's basically an occult new age idea. The center point, to me... It represents the heart of the earth where the beast is right now. He's the point within the circle. And he's stuck there and he's waiting to be released, people. 
Anyway, she steps into the middle, and look what happens. Let it go, let it go. No, that's not the song she sings. So, all you know me, I counted. Each little ray that comes out, I drew a circle and put it over the ray that comes out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven rays on each section, and there are four sections. That's 28. The star that she's standing on has four parts. So 28 plus 4 is 32. Now with her standing in the middle, 33. Just like the Japanese flag with the 16 rays, just like the, um, the Jesuit symbol with the 32 rays, some of them straight, some of them squiggly, it shows opposites. And then, you know, the, the main Jesuit symbol in the middle where it says IHS, 33. United Nations logo, 32 sections of the earth, the 33rd's in the middle. Okay, you understand all that? The CIA logo, 32 black and gray sections around, and there's a picture of George Herbert Walker Bush standing in the middle of it, 33. Remember the video I did where I showed where all these websites were talking about the COVID virus and the number 33, and I counted over 60 of them? Remember that? And I told you then, I don't know what it means. I just know that there's a link with this number 33. Somebody's put their signature on it. And then I remembered that picture of George Bush standing there on the center point, the 32-pointed CIA logo, him being the 33rd point. I'm just wondering if maybe the CIA may or may not have had something to do with this virus, but definitely for sure. This is a fact. Somebody in the CIA puts out news talking points every day in a private server and a select number of national famous reporters and news announcers log in to this secret website, download these little mini scripts that they're given. And it doesn't matter where you go in the country, there's always somebody saying almost the exact same thing like in Chicago that they were saying in St. Louis, that they were saying in Washington, D.C., they were saying in L.A. at the 6 o'clock news, of in Portland, Seattle, Austin, Texas, uh, Orlando, Florida, you name it. They all end up saying the same story. I think they left their mark. Show you it was them. I may be wrong. Maybe something even larger than that. Then, now take a look at this. She transforms into an angel of light. And then she says later on, I'm the fifth element. I'm spirit. I'm the bridge that binds the earth kingdom, you poor puny humans, with the magic world, which is basically devils. She's like the keystone now. You have the two sides of an arch of stone. And unless that keystone is put in place, those blocks will all fall. Put the keystone in place and it puts all the pressure, engineers know this, right there on that keystone. The keystone is very important. The keystone is the bridge that draws this and this together. They're opposites. What did Jesus say? If I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. So what does the Antichrist say? Connect yourselves together and then I'll join you with the fourth kingdom. 
It's a false gospel. It's witchcraft. Because now we have Elsa, because of this, transformed into an angel of light. 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen, And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Well, Pastor, you're kind of getting all worked up over a cartoon, aren't you? After all, just a cartoon for kids, right? Well, let me ask you this question. What do kids like to watch? Cartoons. Where is it that they can... Li I remember growing up in the 70s watching Schoolhouse Rock. I used to love those. I still do. I learned the preamble from watching ABC cartoons Saturday morning and then Schoolhouse Rock would come on and say, We the people, in order to form a more poor, perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility. He, he, he. I remember that to this day. See, they realized that Saturday morning kids were up watching all these cartoons. And so somebody said, We need to educate them while we're doing this. So they invented Schoolhouse Rock to educate children about how things work. Teach them. Cartoons are not just entertainment. Movies are not just entertainment. They're brainwashing. They're slowly but surely taking an entire generation of children. I mean, who does it? What little girl doesn't go around singing, let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go? Who doesn't? They all fell in love with that. And now they're going to be taught the other gospel. Elemental witchcraft. And my heart is sad because the entire generation of children who would have loved to learn stories about Jesus now are being taught to be witches. And I have a feeling they, they will be. The Lord tarries is coming. There's a lot of stuff in this. It's not just about the tall, blonde aliens. It's the spiritual forces that are behind all of that. And it's bigger than you and I can probably fathom. I think you would be surprised at the number of people in Hollywood, wherever they, you know, say Motown, Detroit, Nashville, where they make records, Washington, D.C., the centers of government, you would be amazed at the number of people, famous people, who bare minimum follow some new age ideas. Some are witches. Some are worse in a way that you cannot imagine. There was a video, Anthony Weiner's laptop. Remember Anthony Weiner? He was married to Huma Abedin, who was Hillary Clinton's right-hand man. And he was sexting this 15-year-old girl. The FBI caught up with him. New York PD arrested him and got his phone and his laptop. And they went through his laptop. And they found, a bunch, they found over 100,000 emails that belonged to the State Department of the United States. And then he had a a folder on his laptop called insurance. The police officers that looked at the video that was in there were so sickened by the video that they left the room and bonded it. And these are hardened investigators. There was about anywhere from 8 to 12 New York police officers that viewed the contents of that insurance file. Five of them are dead now. And I was told, we're told, that that video contains a satanic ritual that is so horrendous. I'm not sure that I believe it. I'm, I'm actually telling myself, Mike, don't believe it. But I'm telling myself that for a reason, because I cannot fathom anybody doing what is reported in that video but apparently some people are 
evil. And they did it. So, trying to warn people about the Great White Brotherhood and familiar spirits and aliens and watching Frozen 2 makes me sound a little crazy. But I think I'm right. And I think we need to be careful and be warned. I have a responsibility to warn people. What you do with it's your business. But you are the reason why I do what I do. God bless you. Thank you for listening. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.